So we're recording and live. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to be starting the um, report historical commission meeting for the 27th of October in just a few minutes. Uh, we're just give, allowing a, a minute or two for additional people to join the Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, we have one <clears throat> one panelist or a commissioner that I'm hoping to join, and I see our uh, our our um, applicant Walt Thompson is has uh, joined, so that's good. So we'll be getting started in just a minute. At seven oh one, we'll start with or without Biff because we will have a quorum without him anyway. I'm here. Oh, you're there. There you are. Did you just join Biff? I did. Yes, just uh, 30 seconds ago. Oh, OK, well, then we're all here. So let's officially call the meeting to order. We can get her done, as was once famously said. Um, officially starting the virtual meeting of the Newburyport Historical Commission for the 27th of October 2022. Please be aware that this meeting, like all such virtual meetings, is being recorded. So we'll start with a roll call and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, today I'll do it in reverse alphabetical order okay. just to change things up. <laughs> that would mean uh, Joe Morgan. Here. You're here. Okay. Christopher Fay. Here. Thank you. Um, hang on a second. I made a mistake here. Um, uh, Mark Syndrome. Yes, here. Okay. Biff Baus. Here. Okay. And Andrew Bernhardt. Here. Okay, very good. Now let me say one little thing here. Um, the um, and we just have one thing on tonight's agenda. Uh, I'll just to save time. I'll go over the rules about uh, public here uh, comment period if there is one, because there may or may not be one. So hang on, just a moment here. Okay, so um, one hundred State Street. Uh, this is a. Oh, this is, a, is oh, getting an echo there. I don't know what happened just then. Uh, a DOD or downtown overlay district advisor review. You probably know that this is the most restricted uh, zoning area in the city. Uh, alterations to historic uh, buildings need to have a special permit from the planning board. And our job is to draft a report or send a report to the planning board uh, with our opinions as to whether the alteration is appropriate or whether it will adversely impact the historical value of the structure. <clears throat> so tonight we're going to take a, hear from Walt Thompson. He's the applicant for 100 State Street. That's a, an old, uh, uh, well, it's a federal style brick building and you're a uh, few doors down from High Street. Uh, you're probably, you've probably seen it. If you're, many, many times, uh, probably f a former residential, but now commercial building. So uh, let's see, Can do we have Walt's audio enabled, Caitlin? Walt, can you see if, can you, yeah. you'll need to unmute yourself on your end so we can hear you and you can uh, tell us about your um, plans. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, thank you very much for uh, hearing our application. Uh, 100 State Street is a historic building. Yes, um, and you see a picture here. Next, um, we can go to the next picture, which I think shows the outside of it. Uh, yeah, you're coming. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Walt. You're kind of low and muffled. If you can either get, uh, I'm not sure if it's a question of closer to a microphone or if, or do something that would be a little better. We can hear you, but it's just kind of a bit low and a bit muffled sounding. But yeah, please continue. I'll try this. Um, it's a, a wee bit better. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, this is the front of the building. Next. And uh, this is the side that uh, uh, I use. You can see our, our driveway in the uh, foreground. It's a deeded driveway with uh, two uh, deeded parking spaces. Next, please. Uh, across the street uh, on your left is the Institution for Savings. Next, please. And this is a little bit of a close up uh, of the entrance to unit two, my unit. And as you see, it's a three story Federalist building um, with uh, no gutters on the top. And so this means that uh, the runoff from the roof uh, impacts uh, uh, my wife and I 
uh, and guests as we uh, enter and exit the building. And this is why we're asking for some remediation. Next, please. This is a little more of a close up. Um, we had originally thought that we would have pillars on either side, but because of the style of the uh, railings and the, and the steps there, um, that's not practical. So we're looking for a uh, overhang uh, approval. Um, and that really does show you how much rain comes down uh, from three stories up. Next, please. Uh, this is the same uh, entrance from another angle. Next, please. And a close up. What we're looking for is something that will stick out, um, uh, would be towards the left here, about three and a half feet, uh, to provide protection for us uh, from the rain that comes from the roof. Next, please. Um, some of the particulars around 1800. Uh, it was a single family home. Uh, it was converted to condominiums in uh, 1999. Uh, there are six condominiums in the building and three more are an attached uh, townhouse to the rear. Next, please. A little dialogue about the uh, architectural and historical significance. Uh, we include this in the uh, if this building could talk uh, uh, that's put on every year. Next, please. And uh, that's just the, the end of it, uh, what we saw just previously. Next, please. Uh, here you have a uh, more formal Carter Tilton House, 1795 to 1800. And that's us. It's a beautiful house, and we. Uh, uh, we love it. Next, please. Um, this shows uh, almost like an aerial view. You see the driveway on the right. To the right is the uh, municipal parking lot of State and Harris, and the proposed overhang uh, about 38 feet back from State Street. Next, please. Uh, black and white. Uh, uh, what's notable here is that you see a light on the right-hand side. That light is going to stay um, uh, in the pictures that I've provided. Uh, you'll see a light in the uh, proposed overhang that will not be part of the uh, proposed uh, construction. Next, please. Um, just some specifics. Uh, roughed out four by six. Four, four feet six inch wide by three feet six inch deep and about four feet high. We need the depth because um, of the volume of rain that comes off the top and from that distance. Uh, next, please. Um, that's the last slide. That's it? Yep, that's it. Okay, thank you. Unmute myself here. Thank you, Walter. Um, just give me one second here. Mm. So, um, I'm. I, by the way, let me correct myself. I said this. I was thinking of the building next door, and I said it was uh, commercial. Now, apparently, so that's uh, like uh, it's residential. It's like condos and stuff. Is that correct, Walter? Yes, sir. It's all those yeah. one hundred two State Street is next door, and it's a <clears throat> commercial and residential. But we are all <clears throat> over all paying. Uh, you know, property taxes is you no know, business there. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, do you understand the process here, Walter? You need a special permit for the um, from the planning board, and, and the historical commission uh, presents a report to them about the the, his, the house's historical significance and so on. Um, and then they, you know, they they make the ultimate decision. We do not. We just make a. Uh, we uh, give our uh, opinion to the planning board as to whether we think the, ch the alteration is going to have an uh, adverse impact on the historical values uh, or value of the uh, structure. <clears throat> it's interesting you commented that you originally wanted to do something with pillars. Uh, 
Caitlin, do you have uh, the, the examples? I went around to try to find some examples. And uh, what I found was, um, well, first of all, it's hard to find a federal building with uh, any, like, um, in the, well, the lower one, I'm not sure it's quite technically federal, but most of them have a front entrance like the one in the, the lower one here where there's no, or very, very short overhang. Some of them have um, that little uh, enhanced, if you will, entrance, uh, like the one on the top, which has two columns and, and a little roof in this case. And in this, if, when it's in the front, they often will add like a, that little balustrade and that sort of thing. What it is showing in these two examples is very, when there's a side entrance, uh, the, the, the most of the ones I found around town were would be uh, wearing clothes like this. And uh, you can go ahead, go to page two there, uh, Caitlin. And this is one that may have been kind of what you were originally thinking, but uh, I can appreciate the problem you've got with the, um, the the iron railing there. But this is more typically uh, what you'd see, what you would expect um, as for that period of uh, architecture. Um, because that's exactly what the front of our building looks like. Uh, we have the pillars in the front, uh, in the front of the building. Uh, and I, I took a look at the Bullard House at uh, 346, uh, 346 High Street. And um, it has a, a bit of a uh, uh, overhang, uh, doghouse, whether you could call it. Maybe I, I don't know if I'm on camera or not, but I'll hold this up. Um, uh, no, we don't have any video for you. What was the address, Walter? Uh, uh, 346 High Street, Bullard, D U L O A R D, uh, uh, 1780 has been suggested as a construction date. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was what I looked at to get, you know, I tried Google overhangs. This was the closest I could find to that. We're not married to this um, design. We like it. It's been approved by the Board of Trustees of the Condo Association. Right. But it can be modified or changed uh, with flexible, of course. Okay. Well, um... Let me, what, what I typically do and what I'm about to do now um, is go around the um, the commissioners to get their input um, so that I can then draft a um, report that uh, inc incorporates um, the various opinions of uh, the commissioners. So uh, I get, maybe I'll revert back to uh, alphabetical order or uh, in order in particular. Um, uh, so I'll start with uh, Andrew. I think you're, you're closest to the A's. Any have you any thoughts on uh, the proposed plans here, as far as what you'd like to see included in a um, uh, a report to the planning board on this? With us. Sorry, I just want to make sure. I, is that question directed to me or? Sorry, um, no, no, I'm um, sorry. And, Andrew Bernard. I was muted. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was muted. I'm sorry. I, no problem. That last, the last picture you showed, not his design. Can you just put that back up, the one that you showed with the pillars? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I understand his need for the pillars. I kind of like the design of the top of that, though, com compared to um, what he has um, with the siding. Uh, with their ornate siding. Uh, oh, you um, mean the the brackets? The brackets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the brackets might be a little overdone. I I don't know. Yeah, the uh, well, I'll throw my own opinion in here that the the it's well, it's, uh, the brackets are from a a later architectural period that, that okay would not have appeared on a on a federal period house, right? Um. Okay, and I, I, by the way, I did take a quick look over at the street view uh, for uh, 346 High. So thanks for uh, rendering that or mentioning it to us, uh, Walter, uh, just for the sake of the other folks. if you, you can do that if you like, but basically it's a, it looks, it's got a little roof similar to the one we're looking at now, uh, 
only uh, no, there are no pillars they're just just a straight not a bracketed support just a straight like 45 degree um supporting uh, not sure what you call it beam or whatever a very simple um support thing and i did see one other one like that around the city um it's kind of uh well i'll, I'll <laughs> hold off my uh, further opinion on that all right let's see um biff do you have any uh any uh, thoughts on this yeah um i think it's like a it, it has a strange cantilevered kind of design they have um although i do on the on the 346 high street um side entrance it's very much like like this one here that that's shown um just without those columns um and i think that is closer to a design that sh that should probably be looked at. Um, it's like I, like you were saying those those brackets um, wouldn't wouldn't at all be appropriate. I don't think the yeah. the style of them uh, it need, it definitely needs to be a much more uh, you know classical referenced um, very uh, pretty pretty non ornate you know uh, right. look to it. So I think yeah. that's that would be key. Yeah, I would agree. And, and, and you know, even uh, on the side entrances, obviously, they're not going to get as fancy as on the front, uh, even when they do have go so far as to have columns like the one that's on the screen now, but they wouldn't have, you know, pediments and all that fancy stuff going on. In fact, I'm a little surprised this one even has those, um, I think they're called pilasters where they're, you sort of see the half column uh, against the house there. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Mark Syndrome, thoughts? Um, not any other thoughts that have been expressed. I, I don't think the style of the proposed change is is, um, is totally appropriate. And I think uh, what is shown right now on the image is, is probably what, what should be encouraged. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, Joe, uh, Chris, Christopher Fay. Yeah, I would, I would concur. I have nothing more anything to add. New? I would agree with what's been said. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, I'm 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 not. Uh, there's one thing I'm not clear about is yep. the the visibility of uh, mm -hmm. the side. This I mean, this is a pretty small, insignificant. Uh, it, it it may is this entrance used from the parking lot or what, how how are why are people entering? Uh, on the side of the building, where are they coming from? Um, may I answer that question? Yeah, go ahead, Walter. Why don't you answer that? What you're seeing pictured here are the two easy parking spaces that are assigned to that unit, my unit, and that's the only entrance we have. Okay. Uh, then in on the other side of our unit, which goes out into the common area where the mailboxes are and an exit door. So it's only used by Carol and myself. And okay, and and the picture is taken from the vantage point of the sidewalk. Here, are we seeing this fr uh, from the sidewalk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it might be helpful, Caitlin. I'm one of the yeah yeah. I was just going to say, uh, so so Joe, this uh, in a way is uh, there. You see the door. It's kind of there's a uh, some kind of mm -hmm. shrubbery there that's partly yeah. concealing it, and as you walk up the state street uh that there's a couple of evergreens there that would also tend to um obscure the view so that that that's a factor is um does that you think that sort of um uh do you think if there was a a little rooflet i'm not sure what they would call that little you know overhang little small roof it's uh, maybe you you, you, know, you probably know the correct architectural term for that but um uh with either if it can't be cantilevered um and needs some further support from below or technically i suppose even above uh, the, well it's, the, it's so small the brackets are are flint, uh, are um substantial enough to support it i, I mean okay. i don't think it's really a structural issue it's really in my mind it's um it's, it's not on the main facade of the building. It's, right. it's serving, it's not a public entry. It's serving specifically the needs of the, uh, of the tenant, of the owner for their unit to access it uh, from their deeded parking. 
um, it's in a it's in a side alley, if you will. The, it it is going to be visible from the street. I mean, it's clearly you can you can see how it would be visible from the sidewalk in the street. But right. I I don't I don't think um, even though it would not be historically accurate as a detail, I don't believe it's going to for what's proposed is going to detract considerably. I what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is. Uh, is, is it does, does the the does the the problem require a solution uh, that is um, is historically accurate and would require additional work? I'm not I'm exactly sure how you would place the columns in a yeah. way because it's not just a question of a of a of a small step landing at grade. You've got a raised landing and a rail. So you've yeah. got to have those rails because it's a, it's, right. it's, it's a, uh, it's a code requirement. So right. you would have to modify all of that in order to accommodate the uh, columns, which are purely right. uh, pastiche anyway. They're not going to be structural. Uh, they might be, but they're not needed. So right. I guess my feeling is that we might, I mean, it might be a, 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 the requirement for his historically accurate solution may be overkill here. If, if the proposed solution can be easily removed in the future without any damage to the building. So I would see it as a temporary solution to accommodate a problem uh, that they're having, which is the rain dripping from the eave. I mean, there might be another solution for that. I don't know, like adding a gutter, perhaps. I don't know. Um, that would have its own historical impact. But my, my feeling is that given the, the problem, uh, that the solution should be somewhat commensurate with the scope of the problem. And I, I feel that it's perfectly adequate what's being proposed. So that, I mean, that's okay. my two cents. Okay. And, and, and Walter, just so I understand that, that illustration that you showed, that's obviously not your, your building because it had clabberts and everything. It's, it's another uh, building you found somewhere that had an overhang that you thought might be of the uh, type you could use um the other one uh to bid you basically if if you can if you all can imagine uh that's that overhang that instead of italian style brackets it just had a straight um in lieu of the you know it was more like um those those uh the, like the one at uh so i'm sorry i keep meandering here but the, it's like the, at the one at 346 high is a very simple um, execution of of something like that. It, it does have the the horizontal part that goes across the bottom of the 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 you know the triangle there, the, the two segments of the that form the little roof. It has the part that goes across from across the front to make it more you know a little bit more complete. And it doesn't have and it's instead of um, you know the only real difference is that rather than um, you know, brackets that um, harken back to a Victorian or Italian type style. It just has a straight um, bracket clearly there, you know, strictly for structural purposes. And um, and I think, Joe, to your point that um, uh, that given its look, size, location, functionality, removability, et cetera, et cetera, you know, yeah, it's not, you know, just if if a straight cantilever, you know, just if especially where it's uh wants well, how does he want it to be like like uh some you know three and a half feet deep that might be too much weight to just sort of bolt onto the side. I honestly don't know. That would be for someone else to figure out. But if it had to be supported in some in some way, just a just a straight um member would be preferable to, uh, you know, something that was trying to serve some uh, decorative function that wouldn't be, you know, that would clash with the the rest of the federal architecture. So, we're, and, and just to be clear, we're not, I don't think anyone is suggesting that he tried to do something that looks like it was original. That's not necessarily, it's neither necessary nor even necessarily recommended by the, the guidelines, but it should at least be compatible and not, um, uh, you know, kind of jarring, if you will. Does that make sense? May I, I just said? May I uh, add one thing? Sure. Yeah, that's I, Biff, right? 
Yeah, that's Beth. Um, I, I was just looking at, again, at the the other, was it three, 349? Uh, 346. 346. 346. Yeah. Um, I, I think the way they've done it isn't probably the best solution, but I think that uh, the I think the thing is that's most jarring is the on this proposed uh, picture is just that the it has right. all the curves in it and whatnot. Right. And there are federal style corbels right. uh, that would do the same thing, um, and everything else about it would be, you know, basically the same look. Um, just and that wouldn't necessarily look like it's trying to fit in, and you know, because you wouldn't have the columns and this whole portico built out from the side. But right. if it just had something like I was saying earlier, just something more simplified um, right. and not so, the, the, these just seem very heavy. Um, right. right. And, yep. and, and no, like they're trying to show that they're made of wood. I mean, it's kind of part of the, the look of those. So um, I think that's, that's really the only uh, issue I see. I, I think I see with that. And I think that could be easily fixed with just getting a more federal style appropriate Kind of, yeah, uh, right. A lighter, horrible. a lighter touch on those, yes. on those, yeah. on those brackets. Or, exactly. All right. Um, one last thing, and there's a question for Mr. Morgan, since you're the the former architect. <laughs> um, what do you? What would you? If that was just a, like a straight 45 degree. What? What is there a name for that particular structure? Part of the structure. I'm sorry, Glenn. I, I really, you know, I'm no. I'm really totally ignorant on these architectural oh, okay. uh, issues. Uh, I mean, on these uh, historical uh, yeah. questions, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to just. <laughs> the only way I can really approach the problem is is by looking at the practicality of the solution mm. that's being proposed. I, mm. I, I don't know what's appropriate historically yeah. as the detail that would be appropriate uh, for the. Um, you know, for historical authenticity, I'm really completely, um, I'm uh, illiterate. Okay. Um, well, that's, yeah, and that's not really what I was, I was sorry. asking about anyway. I just, what I was really asking was sim much more simple than that. I was just that I know that something like what we're looking at now, they refer to them as brackets. I didn't know if you would still call it a bracket if it was just a straight I, piece of I wood. would call it a bracket. Anything oh. that projects okay. like that from the building at, a, at, a, at, at an angle upward to capture oh, okay. a, <clears throat> uh, uh, a cantilever, I would call definitely, I would call that a bracket. That's okay. The worst. Well, then, yeah, yes, a bracket would be the architectural term. Yes. Oh, okay. That's all I was really asking. So we're just looking at a at a different style of bracket. All right. So, so, um, Walter, Mr. Thompson, what we'll do is uh, so we've gone around the commission. Uh, I think I've got a pretty good con uh, sense of, and we, we all seem to be looking at this about the same way. I think. Um, I don't hear anyone uh, striking a note of violent opposition to you solving, you know, what uh, Joe uh, Morgan was was described as, you know, you, the the practical problem you're trying to solve, which is to be able to get in and out without getting soaked from the runoff uh, from the gutterless uh, roof there. So, um, and given the the size, the location, everything else, I think I think a design could be. Uh, uh, come up with could could be found uh, that would uh, give you what you need at at a reasonable cost. Doesn't have to be um, you know an elaborate uh, thing as some of the examples I showed. So what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll write that all up uh, for the uh, for the planning board um, with you know as our how we see this thing and um, it'll go from there. Do you have any other questions or comments before we close this particular matter? Yes, and, and I appreciate everybody's comments. And I too did not like the uh, the swales or whatever you would call yep. it, the wood uh, there. But uh, being that the rain uh, uh, over a course of three feet or uh, three stories down tends to uh, flash out at uh, about three feet from the uh, from the doorway. Right. Uh, uh, I was faced with having uh, on uh, a bracket uh, that would be uh, that would go out further than just uh, what appears to be on uh, uh, the one at, at 346. 
And so going out that far, I needed some way to uh, keep it from falling. And mm -hmm. I'm not a contractor nor an architect, so I, I picked this, but I appreciate everybody's comments and uh, I look forward to revising uh, uh, this as needed. Okay. Do you, um, do you, can you see yourself doing something similar to what uh, is at 346 High Street? Yes, if it was out a little further. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it would, be, it would be scaled to to your particular problem, to your particular situation. Old, yeah, and it seems to be out of uh, six to twelve inches, but uh, might look nice, but it wouldn't reduce the amount of water that uh, we get. I wonder if we're looking at the same thing. The one I'm looking at at, at uh, that one thing on High Street is that there's the side entrance. There is a there's a little, there's a side entrance that has a little roof and and uh, just straight board racket you know brackets that's just a straight piece of you know wood or whatever it is uh, that's very very simple in construction but it looks actually it looks fine uh, and the the little roof itself has got um, the design is sort of um, reminiscent of a lot of um, that triangular pediment that's on many uh, federal entrances, so it so it doesn't look, you know, weirdly out of place so much. Uh, it, so yeah, take a look at that side, and and I can uh, uh, maybe through the planning office. I I also saw I think I have a photo I took actually of uh, on Green Street a federal period or close enough period uh, building that had that also had something very similar. It had a bracket, but it was just a very straight, simple bracket, light, you know, not real heavy, not ornate, that I think would be uh, probably be more appropriate, less, uh, less jarring. All right, so we will um, uh, follow up on that. And I'll, 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 I'll send you those things so you can take a look at those and work with uh, wh whoever it is, you know, you're, you're working with your contractor, builder, what, architect whatever to see what you can come up with um well, we're not, we haven't gotten one of those yet because we haven't yep. gotten to that stage but right thank you very much you're quite welcome okay so that will end the discussion of 100 state street um the other things are um the uh, under general, there are no uh, demo delay hearings or anything like that. Under general business, uh, Andy Port, did you have any updates? If not, I'll I'll just go ahead with. I just have a couple minor things. No, thank you. Okay, uh, then um, you know, I was going to mention two things. You recall Six Washington Street? That was the very nice Italian house that we've talked about a couple times in these meetings. Uh, just this is just an FYI. They did uh, make some further changes to their plans, um, and they do go before the planning board on November second. I'm not planning on writing additional, you know, report or anything to be anything like that for the additional plans or the updated plans. I personally think they're slightly better in that um, I think they differentiate the new from the old better, which was a concern of mine. It seemed that their old design, I don't know, just seemed too too many brackets, too imitative. It's, I don't know, it just seemed a little too much to, to my personal view anyway. Um, but the siding still goes all the way down to the bottom. So that's just, I, I agree with Joan that it just, even if it didn't, even if it was on a different house, it just, still looks a little odd, but that's neither here nor there. So anyway, if you would like to, uh, November 2nd is when the planning board will hear that. You're perfectly welcome to attend and speak on as a member of the public. Um, if, if not, you know, obviously we can't individually speak on behalf of the commission, but you're certainly welcome to um, make a public comment. I think, Caitlin, they can, that can also be submitted if someone can't make that meeting but wants to submit something in writing, can they just send uh, like an email to you or something? Absolutely. You can send an email to me and I can um, send it to the planning board um, as a comment letter. Okay. Thank you. The, uh, the, the other update I had was that um, I've been working on a review um, of the preservation restriction for the old jail complex. Um, this is um, a more complex one than usual, um, not to overuse that word, but um, just expect that um, we'll, we'll be taking another look at that. Uh, we, the historical commission approved 
a version of the uh, preservation restriction uh, back in like the summer of 2019. I think Chris Fay was the only member that's presently on the board that was here back then. And both he and I were, were pretty new. I think I'd only been on the commission a few months at that point. Uh, so that's how far this goes. It was sent to Mass Historic for review. They sent it, sent back a comment saying, look, this is too much of a departure from the standard format. Please redo it. Well, they did, but it took them a long time to do it. And they didn't send a, a truly finished revised uh, version until uh, I don't have the timeline in front of me, but quite a bit later. So anyway, we're not going to review it or anything tonight. I just wanted to, this is just an FYI that this will be coming up. And because so many of you are uh, new to the matter, new to the, you know, have not heard all this, um, I will uh, give you uh, some background information on it so you understand what went on. Because I'm expecting that um, Mass Historic, when they get finished reviewing it, will may, may have uh, some changes and stuff. And typically what we then do is uh, bring it back to the city uh, which me, which the historical commission will review it again, make sure that we're okay with any changes that have been made. Um, that's usually not a problem because Mass Historic isn't going to do anything that's that's more lenient than anything we've done. Uh, usually, it's the opposite. Uh, then we then then it goes gets signed off by you know the the, the city council and all that good stuff, and um, and then I think. The it goes back to, uh, I think Mass Historic will do like a pre-approval letter, basically saying that that if you guys that we're okay with this version, we'll sign off on it. If you do, so we we meaning the city signs off on it, and then it goes back to Mass uh, Historical Commission. They sign off on it, and then it gets um, filed at the registry, and then it's done. I'd really very much like, like to get this PR done before I die. So, or or the end of the year, whichever comes first. Uh, sorry, a little dark humor there. Anyway, so that's gonna be coming up. Um, I've been working on that quite a bit. And um, so be more to come on that. Um, we do have another bit of formal business and that's the approval of the minutes for or revised minutes from the 13th of October. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from 13th of October? I hope. I can make oh. that motion. Okay, I was gonna say, Biff, don't just smile, make a motion. <laughs> Is it seconded? I seconded, Andrew. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Okay, um, your vote, Andrew? Yes. Okay, one second. And Biff? Yes. Okay. And uh, Mark? Well, technically, I was not there, but I'll approve oh. them for the last. Uh, well, I'm going to mark you as uh, absent. Uh, and Chris, you weren't here either, right? Right. Okay. And Joe, I don't think you were here either, were you? Uh, were yes, you? I was. Yes. Oh, you were. Okay. And are you okay? With, uh, the, the minutes are okay? Yes. Okay, very good. And the chair is yes. So that gives us one, two, three, four affirmative votes. The minutes are approved with the necessary four votes. Okay. Um, the only thing I have left, unless anyone has any last comments, is a motion to adjourn. Uh, anyone have anything? If not, someone is free to make such a motion. So moved. Mark. Okay. Mark. Okay. Is that seconded? Andrew. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Second. Okay, um, so your vote, Mr. Bernhardt? Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Baus? Yes. Okay, Mark Sandrone? Yes. Yes, you're here and can vote for that one, Chris Fay? Yes. Okay, thank you, Joe Morgan? Yes. And the chair is, is uh, in agreement, so without objection, the meeting is adjourned, and I thank you all for your attendance. Uh, we wrapped it up fairly early tonight. Um, thank you, but thanks as always for your um, participation in this commission. I do have plan to make some phone calls to some prospective members to see if we can fill out the uh, empty slot. Mr. I think I already told you that uh, Malcolm has, has not re-upped his um, 
membership. He was on the board for quite a while. Okay. Well, good night, everyone. Thanks again. Good night. Good night. Take care, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Yep. You're all welcome. Thank you. Thank you.